Everybody and their mothers want a quirky these days, thanks to the hilarious internet memes, their quirky sense of humor, and their cute stubby legs, it's hard resisting the adorableness of a corgi. But before you bring home a corgi, these are things you should absolutely know about these dogs. So let's talk about things that no one tells you when owning a corgi. Number 1. Corgis aren't quiet dogs at all If you're sensitive to loud noises or have small children that are, then the corgi may not be for you. Sure, they may be small dogs, but that doesn't mean they can't make a lot of noise. In fact, their barks are so much louder than you would expect. However, you have to understand that this is just how these dogs communicate. They bark when they're upset, they bark when they're excited, and they bark when they're hungry. You just have to accept the fact that they're prone to unnecessary alarm barking, where they'll bark to the slightest of sounds in or around your home. All it takes is a squirrel running across the backyard to set these dogs off. After all, they were bred to herd cattle that literally weigh 100 times more than them. They may be too small for these massive animals to see, but with their loud barking, you can be sure they know where they're at. Number 2. There's no need to dock a corgi's tail Although it's somewhat rare to see a tail on a Pembroke Welsh corgi, docking their tails isn't really necessary anymore. This is something I wish I knew before we brought home our corgi. You see, in the past, all working dogs had their tails surgically cut off which is essentially what tail docking is. People believed that working dogs had a higher chance of injuring their tails, which can lead to gruesome pain and a lot of medical complications. Take the corgi, for example. These dogs are so low to the ground that it's possible that the much larger cow could easily step on their tail while being herded. While this may seem like a great idea in the past, the fact is barely any corgis are still herding on farms. Today, the vast majority are just family companions. So why do we still dock a corgi's tail? This tradition of tail docking can be traced back to England in the 17th century, where the parliament introduced a tax on companion dogs. To differentiate between companion dogs and working dogs, the community decided to cut the tails off working dogs, including the herding corgis. So after many centuries and countless generations of corgis sporting this look, the tradition stuck. But the reality is, tail docking your corgi is purely for cosmetic purposes today. Personally, I think having a tail makes it easier to read the emotions of your corgi, all while making them seem more animated and lively. So consider reaching out to your breeder and requesting the tail of your new pup to stay intact. Number 3. Corgis need more exercise than you think Making the assumption that corgis are couch potatoes is easily one of the biggest mistakes of new owners. Corgis are relatively small dogs and often get mislabeled with lap dogs. But don't be fooled, this is far from the case. Sure, a corgi may fit in your lap, but good luck trying to get them to stay there for long. The truth is, the corgi is a highly energetic dog that needs a lot more physical stimulation than one would think. A full-grown adult corgi will require roughly one hour of exercise each day in order to stay happy and healthy. This can be in the form of playing catch with his favorite ball, going for long walks around the neighborhood, or even playing with other dogs at the park. Without this, Corgis will start to show destructive behaviors, such as tearing up your favorite pair of shoes or going on a timely barking rampage. As herding dogs, corgis were accustomed to running around for long periods of time while chasing livestock. This means letting your corgi roam freely around a small backyard won't cut it. Number 4. Corgis are too smart for their own good Corgis are smart dogs, and there's no owner that would tell you otherwise. In fact, Pembroke Welsh Corgi ranked the 11th smartest dog breed in the world, beating out clever breeds like the Australian Shepherd, Cocker Spaniel, Schnauzer, and many more. And while it may sound cool owning an intelligent dog breed, that's not always the case. You see, smarter dogs require more work. More intelligent dogs also tend to get into trouble because they know how to push all the right buttons and get away with it. It feels like they're always evaluating the risk and reward. If they think they can get away with something, you can bet they'll take their chances if the reward is big enough. Plus, they're sneaky dogs. Before you know it, they're already digging through your trash can looking for food. So if you think about it, an intelligent dog is really both a blessing and a curse. But it also makes sense that smart dogs require more mental stimulation. With a higher mental capacity, they'll need to work out their brains more than others. Unfortunately, this is the case with the corgi. So, in addition to physical exercise on a daily basis, you'll need to provide plenty of mental exercises too. Number 5. Corgis can get nippy with you Like I've mentioned, corgis were originally bred to herd livestock. To do this, they would nip at the heels of the livestock to push them towards an intended direction. 
Needless to say, they've been herding for several generations all over the world. We call this their instinctive intelligence, and it's something that they were born with. In other words, they'll know how to do this with little to no human intervention and training. But the problem with this is that there's a chance they'll nip at your heels. Because there's no cattle or sheep for them to unleash their instinctive tendencies on, the next best thing is to nip at the heels of their humans. This can become especially dangerous when there are small kids around. They can mistake a small child for a sheep and in turn try to herd the children by chasing them and nipping at their heels. However, this type of behavior is much more common in corgi puppies. As they grow older and spend a bit of time with obedience training, they'll likely subdue these instincts to live in harmony with humans. Number 6. Corgis can do everything if there's food involved. I think I can safely speak on behalf of the whole corgi community. I've never met a corgi that wasn't food driven, but that's not always a bad thing because now you have, well, incentive. The best way to get your corgi to do something is by bribing them with their favorite treats. As a pup, my corgi was a lot more responsive to obedience training. She learned a whole arsenal of tricks and would happily do it for the sake of working. Um, scratch that. I mean, for the sake of food. Corgis love to work, but they love food even more. There's no more guarantee my dog will spin around or roll over for me unless I'm holding a treat in my hand. The good news is that food-driven dogs are way easier to train. When the incentive is high, you can bet they'll give it their all. The bad news is that they'll eat until their stomach explodes. These dogs are prone to obesity, so no matter how many times they give you their sweet puppy eyes, you'll need to resist overfeeding them. Number 7. Constant jumping will be a problem for your corgi. This is another thing I wish I knew about corgis. They are highly active dogs that need their run to release all that pent-up energy. But if you can, limit the jumping. And by jumping, I'm not talking about the typical jumping as your corgi plays with other dogs at the park. Rather, I'm talking about routinely jumping up and down high surfaces, such as the bed or the couch. Too much jumping can actually put a lot of stress on the spine and hips of a corgi, leading to many problems in late adulthood. And according to PetMD, Corgis are prone to some serious back and hip-related health issues, such as disc disease and canine hip dysplasia. Why are they susceptible to these conditions? Well, it's because of the corgi's odd shape. They have long bodies but short legs, which tends to put extra pressure on the spine if they're jumping up and down from heights. Instead of letting them freely jump as they please, try to get them a dog ramp for the couch and bed. If you get this for them too late, there's no guarantee they'll get used to it. So start training them to use the ramp while they're young. Number 8. Corgis are notorious shedding machines Just because they're small doesn't mean they won't shed a lot. Corgis are little shedding machines that shed heavily year-round. You can thank their thick double coats for that. And you want to know the worst part? During the spring and fall seasons, when their coats are readjusting to their upcoming season, they'll blow their coats. This is when they take shedding to the next level. At times, you might even be able to pull patches of fur from their coats by simply brushing them. It was so bad, we literally had tumbleweeds of corgi fur rolling through the home. So if you are allergic to dog fur or don't have the time to frequently groom your dog, I'm sorry to say, the corgi isn't for you. So with all these reasons why I probably shouldn't own a corgi, do I regret it? Not one bit. Corgis are the best dogs. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, you're going to love this video on odd dog behaviors and what they actually mean. And yes, the corgi's splute made an appearance. 